A spine surgery, fortunately, is recommended in less than 4% of total people who come with back or neck pain. Uh, it is mostly required in those who have some form of paralysis or in whom there is a restriction of activity. That is, they can't walk or they can't stand or they can't sit for a long time. They can't travel or they can't function at their job because of uh, pressure on their nose, which is continuously giving them pain or causing weakness. These are the ideal patients for spine surgery. Yes, every procedure uh, has some risk, like we travel on the road, there's always a risk of having a bad road accident. Similarly, all spine surgeries also have some uh, baggage that comes with there. The most uh, fearful risk is of getting paralysis, what we call in medical terms a neuro deficit. Uh, fortunately, with minimal access spine surgery, in published papers of over 4000 plus spine surgeries which were assessed, the risk of a neuro deficit is sub sub decimal, like three out of 4000 plus patients had some transient leg pain which resolved over a period of time that's how it's become safe but in open surgery the risk of a neuro deficit can be anything between 0.5 to 2 percent depending on the surgeon's experience and the infrastructure uh, traditionally spine surgery was done only when a patient got paralyzed so it's like uh, giving a polio vaccine after you've got polio. I mean, it has its role because there are two other types of polio viruses that can infect you. So the vaccine will prevent you from further damage, but the damage that has been done is done. Similarly, when I was studying 30 years back, the only time people would intervene in the spine was when you got paralysis. So obviously to get the paralysis undone was difficult. So this had this fear that if I get a spine surgery, I'm never going to walk. Today with modern technology, better understanding and knowledge sharing, uh, we are able to intervene before the problem occurs. So a lot of times we see that the bones have slipped or there is an infection of the spine or there is a tumor that is growing. We can intervene and stop it from becoming bad. Uh, there are certain well-researched criteria for that. However, for the common man, it is still the fear of what was there before. So, uh, to give you an example, uh, let me start with the surgery of the appendix. When I was a kid and when we were training, we used to open up the stomach and take out the appendix. Today, they introduce a small scope and do the same job. Essentially, both the surgeries have the same endpoint. However, when you do an open surgery, your hernias will happen through the scar. Your blood loss, which is in excess of that of a laparoscopic, will happen through the scar and you will hold your stomach for six months to heal. Similarly, when you do a minimal access spine surgery, what you're doing is you're only uh, taking out the area which is bad. We service in an open surgery, you actually split a normal muscle and weaken it further. You take out the laminae, which are actually uh, anchoring points and protection for the spine and anchoring points for the muscles. So this causes a lot of uh, collateral damage trying to correct. This collateral access damage is reduced in minimal access surgery. Today we have scopes that are as small as 8 millimeters to 6 millimeters of endoscopy where uh, you can do a surgery. Some of the surgeries can be done without anesthesia under local. They are done as daycare. You can come in the morning and walk home in the evening. So it's a minimal access spine surgery basically has reduced the access trauma uh, while doing the surgery because of which the patient can get back to work faster, there is less pain and because you are using a microscope or an endoscope, you have a very clear magnified view of the spinal cord. So the chances of injuring are very less. Whereas in an open surgery, you have to look with your vision and as you gain experience, by the time you say you reach 45, 50, you are already requiring vision correction in form of glasses. So your vision is compromised as you get your experience. So you know how to do stuff, but you can't see it well. That is eliminated by a microscope or a endoscope, which makes your vision better. So the chances of injuring it become less. Also, 
a lot of surgeries, open surgeries can't be done on people who have heart diseases, who have bad diabetes or whose kidneys or liver are bad. But you can do it with minimal access because you are causing so little change in the physiology of that person that even if he has a compromised heart or compromised uh, liver, you can still carry out and give him quality of life. So spine surgery can, uh, theoretically, you can end up damaging the spinal cord, you can end up da damaging the nerve roots, and if you're not careful, you can da end up damaging structures in front of the cord, like the great vessels or the colon. Fortunately, it rarely, if ever, happens. And uh, even in open surgery, the rates are like 1 to 2%, whereas in minimal access is like 0 0.00 something percent. It is uh, spine surgery, even when done open, is very safe. We do a lot of surgeries which still require open the spine. Uh, it is how safe is your surgeon? Is the surgeon trained for spine surgery? You wouldn't get your uh, heart's kidney operated by a surgeon who is a specialist for the heart. Similarly, you wouldn't get your spine operated by a neurosurgeon or an orthopedic surgeon. You would want it to be operated by a specialist trained spine surgeon. To be a spine surgeon, you need to do a fellowship. Once you have a focused practice on an organ, you understand it functioning better. And because you're focused on only one thing, you're more likely to do it better. A trained spine surgeon, the chances of an open surgery going wrong are very, very minimal. Uh, so there are certain very well laid rules for open surgery, still rules over minimal access surgery. For example, if a previous spine surgery has been done where screws have been used, then to take out the screws and redo the whole thing, it's very difficult to do it via minimal access. The second thing is the cost. Minimal uh, access spine surgery unfortunately comes with a little bit of extra cost as the technology is yet not uh, accepted by mass, uh, how to say, every surgeon. The moment uh, a lot of people start doing it, the cost of the screws and the microscopes will come down. But since it is early years of this, it's only one and a half, two decades old, it is a little more expensive. So in a country like India, costs uh, become a big factor in not doing a minimal access surgery. However, with Indian companies coming up with good quality implants, this also is getting down to a lower uh, uh, Spine surgeries have become extremely safe. In fact, uh, it is safer to have a spine surgery than have a road journey today. Uh, at the Kokila Ben uh, Dhirubhai Ambani Hospital, we believe that every patient, irrespective of his uh, affordability and financial status receives good and the same care. We have invested in a complete spine suite. We have an OAM uh, 2, the latest edition that's there worldwide. We have an SA to navigation. We have the only Jackson Trials table in the country. Uh, in short, all of these uh, instruments uh, enable us to do the spine surgery safely. Whereas, uh, if I were to pass a screw, human accuracy, the best of it is 94%. Whereas when you use an OAM with navigation, it comes down to 99.7%. So error margin is actually 0.3% or less. Uh, so far in the past two years, we have done hundreds of them and not a single screw has gone out of its place. We have not had a single paralysis because of a misplaced screw. Uh, we have probably every scope that is there in business. So uh, the infection rate is extremely low. In fact, we are better than the global averages for in minimal access surgery for this. And uh, even in the general ward, we have kept the prices so low that uh, even a common person uh, can afford this facility. We also do it in uh, cases where they fit the criteria. We give great uh, big discounts to see that even the poorest sections are able to take uh, advantage of these facilities and uh, the safety of spine surgery is enhanced because of uh, our neuro monitoring because we see real time if we are actually causing any damage uh, because of our continual refinement of our imaging that is we always have the see that the microscope we use is 
with the current standards and we have been uh, upgrading it every time the new version comes. So this enables us to always be at the top of the cutting edge of technology. All these things bring in the safety that's it's like a car. Uh, you're probably never going to have an accident but it's always better to have airbags and seat belts on. Similarly probably with experience uh, your surgery becomes better but it's always better to have a better microscope or better neuromonstering a better navigation to improve the outcome. So because you can't uh, rest on what you did good in the past you have to keep improving and raise the bar that's what we believe at uh, the hospital here and we have been so far been successful in, in making it the safest uh, center for spine surgery one of the safest ones in the country So uh, what happens is traditionally when we do spine surgery, especially complicated ones like scoliosis or fixed deformities, it's very difficult to pass screws because you have to use uh, either a two-dimensional C-arm or you have to use your experience to put it. Uh, and everybody can go wrong sometime. So what we do, O-arm is a CT scan, uh, C-arm hybrid. Essentially what it does, it gets a 360 degree view of the patient's anatomy and then you feed it to a navigation. It works like a GPS system, uh, like you go on Google Maps. It's like the Google map of the body. It gives us a complete anatomical reconstruction in three dimension. So without even cutting, through making small incisions on the skin, I can pass a screw with 99.7% accuracy, which is unimaginable uh, doing it without this. This also reduces the radiation exposure to the uh, staff which is a major concern of minimal access surgery and to achieve a very seamless artifact free image you need to have a good table that does not have metallic parts. A Jackson table is made of carbon fiber so there's no chance of a metallic artifact coming when you're spinning your arm around. So a combination of these two is very essential. You won't have, uh, like you can buy an arm and probably use a small uh, non-carbon uh, fiber table, but it's like having a Rolls Royce with bullock cart wheels. You wouldn't want that. So investment in good technology always gets you good results in medical field and this two are currently the global standards for the highest quality care anywhere in the world so with this we are very happy to say that it has brought down the stress level both for the surgeon and surely for the patient for the patient knowing um, that it can't get safer than this and the surgeon knowing that yes i am what i'm seeing is accurate and real time Do not fear in taking a spine opinion. It is always good to seek an opinion of a spine surgeon before going out for treatment for your ailment. Understand that majority, when I say majority, 95% plus spine ailments are self-limiting or will get better with medication and physiotherapy. It's only 4 to 5% who end up requiring procedures. Majority of these procedures are now very safe and minimal access. There are very few spine surgeries nowadays which come with a lot of risk attached to them. So do not fear that. Take good scientific help so that you do not end up with problems.